it's crunch time for all the spiritual people it's crunch time for all of the spiritual people and Glastonbury is like and I guess that's why I'm here you know Glastonbury is like you know spiritual graveyard you know and uh, I'm probably the realest part of it I grew up in inner city Brixton Clapham area um, and then we moved, my mother was a single mother, and we moved to uh, Peckham. And that's where I was pretty much raised in Peckham. Um, Peckham, I love it. Salt of the earth. You know, you can't get any real earth in Peckham. You know, the people are real, real as hell over there. It's like Yorkshire, you, you know, you, you're just brought up tough. <laughs> you're just brought up tough. Um, I was always different, I was always a quiet, I was always into nature, I was always messing with bugs and stuff when everybody was playing computer games, Atari and whatever, you know, and Sega. I was always messing with bugs and pulling f wings off flies and whatever, and legs off ants to see if they could still move. My life really changed when I dis when rugby league came my way in secondary school. I didn't know what rugby league was, and God knows why I went after school and uh, kind of signed up for this thing. And, but anyway, I did. After school came, went, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Ran home, couldn't even breathe. Told my mum about this thing called rugby league and how much I love it. And, you know, she, she, she let me uh, do it again and stay on after school and come home late and all that kind of stuff. That went from the school team at the same time as that. Um, I was captain of the London team. I played for London, London schoolboys. Again, I will never forget it because you got you got to imagine that all us inner city kids from Peckham, um, like we were only exposed to crime. That was the main event of our lives. That changed my life. That was a father figure for me because my father wasn't around. So I learned about how to respect men, how to be a man, how to respect. Um, you know, people in general and how to be respected. Yeah, by the sixth, by the sixth year, I was on loan to a really lowly club um, for a month just to get some games in. I was in their first team and I was running around with the ball and uh, basically got clobbered by two like huge dudes. But um, it wasn't an ordinary clobbering, it was I was in an awkward position because um, they only just caught me so I got into an awk awkward position and when one had just clawed me and slowed me down the other one jumped jumped on top of me and it, and it, it ripped my neck um, from here down to my back to the middle of my back and it was like if you could hear just tearing wet chicken <laughs> that was my neck and um, I was out for uh, over a, well maybe two years and after, and after a year I just quit and I couldn't move my neck without really severe pain um, and during that time I got onto the whole fruitarian thing um, and that was a revelation and I thought I I, I thought I made that up myself so the whole fruitarian thing for me was just eating fruits as they came no no preparation, no garnishing, no, you know, making it look nice or appetizing. It was just, you saw an orange, you peeled it, you ate it, and that's it. I didn't realize that that was like an advanced level in the raw food community. Um, I didn't realize it was a completely extreme way of life in their eyes. I just thought, I, being uh, in a city kid from Peckham, I came into it without any fear, without any information I just did it because it felt right basically nobody wanted to take on the label fruitarianism or fruitarian I did um, and I'm doing the same thing with the breatharian label in terms of taking it on proving everybody wrong and then saying right this is what it is so of course I went through the whole I learned my trade with the whole fruitarian thing and it went on for like eight to ten years the whole process I learned about the cleansing, um, and this is how I hold the, the term
cleanliness is next to godliness so, so, so highly because I, I went through all that. I did things that nobody wanted to do. Because I realized, you know, you can't just clean for three days and think you're sparkling. It's just not going to happen. You have to clean consistently for, for, in my case, it was years. I had to clean for years consistently before I even saw any breakthroughs. And when I did see the breakthroughs, that's when I made the progress onto liquidarianism. In terms of getting to that stage, you need to invest like at least 15 years. At least 15 years to where you're food free, water free, consistently. Because I, I spent like six years on oranges, orange juice alone. After, after the six, five, six years, preferanism started to creep in and I started to drink water like a glass of water a day and that went to like half a glass of water a day sounds crazy to a point where a mouth full of water felt so heavy felt so heavy and uncomfortable um, and I know it was because it was water I stopped that and that went on on and off for a period of time and then, of course, that was the signaling of breatharianism being phased in. Your organs change, your organs shrink. It's like an, an, an elastic band. Yeah. Man-made food is uh, a means of keeping you stretched, keeping your stomach stretched. Like I said, it's like an elastic band. If you pull the elastic band and you let go of the other end, it will snap right back to its original size. And I believe that that's what the body's doing when we eat man-made foods or, or eat and drink, period. We're stretching the organs um, and taking them out of their original shape. To this day, I've been doing it for like over three years now. Um, Food-free, water-free, just my saliva. Um, when people tell me how long I've been doing breatharianism or how long I've been um, not having anything, I will tell them it's not, that's not the case. I always have something. I always have my saliva. The pressure to, to be pure is unbelievable when you say that you're a breatharian um, and you don't have anything. is unbelievable. It's like you even feel awkward going into a supermarket to buy trash, trash bags, rubbish bags, or a toothbrush just in case somebody sees you walking past the food you know um, it's that it, you know you're under the microscope and I can actually teach somebody how to go food free or preferring I just need them to commit to the amount of time that it will take which is like I say is over 15 years being so demanding it's uh, I don't know how popular it's going to be because you know I mean who wants to go without food and drink and live their life 